a very good evening and very good Saturday. Uh, we from DBTV. Today we have a special edition. We are taking you live straight from Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, we have invited uh, the specialists of uh, creative industry and also specialists in uh, marketing and sales in retail. Uh, she has vast experience in South Africa. A well-known creative director will be sharing with us today about the retail uh, scenario and environment of uh, situation in South Africa. I would like to welcome uh, Ms. Suan Holland. Assalamualaikum, Suan. Your mic is off. Your mic is mute. Oh, okay. alaikum salam. <laughs> um, um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm very um, honored to be invited here today. Um, shukran for inviting me. Um, I'm very um, excited to hear the kind of questions and the interest that the people of Malaysia have and questions that they might have. Uh, nice to so be here. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, Malaysia and South Africa is having a very good uh, government, good relationship in terms of government to government, business to business. We would like to know or we would like uh, you to share with us uh, during this pandemic uh, in Cape Town or in South Africa. What is the situation now over there? In terms of the, the actual pandemic or in terms of the retail environment? Uh, um, so I can start off by saying, so the actual pandemic, so about a week ago, we moved down to, I think, level two. For a very long time now, we've been on level three. So I think our restrictions are slowly starting to ease a little bit. Obviously, we had the Delta variant um, here in South Africa. And currently, I'm in Cape Town in the Western Cape and the numbers our peak, it was actually taking quite a while for it to start uh, to slowly go down. But more and more, as people are taking their doses and they're taking the vaccine and the rollout um, is accelerating, we're hoping that the more people taking the vaccine, um, you know, the situation will slowly um, get better. Currently, a lot of the um, people that are being hospitalized are people that haven't been vaccinated. Um, and I think that hopefully, um, when the rest of the country starts getting vaccinated, you know, the situation will get better. So I think in terms of restrictions, it's, they're slowly lessening it, although we are expecting a potential fourth wave in December, which obviously from a retail perspective, you know, that's um, yeah, in South Africa, it's the time when people do the holiday shopping, the Christmas shopping and that kind of thing. So we'll actually just need to wait and see. But currently, right now, as of last week, we've moved down to level two. Um, I think in terms of the the morale of the company, I mean, of the country, I think that, um, you know, some it's, it's better in certain parts of the country. Um, you know, it's so funny that a lot of people have been taking like little mini holidays because currently, yeah, we are allowed to travel um, within the country and go on to like little holidays. So I think when they do go for weekends away and stuff like that, it has helped kind of boost the the um, the morale of some people, the ability to be able to do that. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, as a creative director, what do you do? Okay, so my job really as a creative director is I work for one of the, the largest retail companies in South Africa yeah. as a creative director in the advertising agency within the marketing department. Yeah. So, um, Obviously, working in a retail environment and the specific retailer um, is a food, fashion, beauty, home retailer, which means that um, in terms of how the company performed during COVID, um, the fact that we had a food business as well really helped, um, you know, um, I suppose with, with I suppose, um, job security for myself, for example, because the one thing that obviously happened during COVID was a lot of people, um, either they lost their jobs or the hours were cut short or something like that. But funnily enough for myself, working in the, the, um, the retail environment, 
we actually kept busy. You know, we were working from home. We still had to do marketing campaigns. We still had to advertise the stuff that was going out. And for me, one of the, the, the great things that I enjoyed during the um, lockdown was the fact that a lot of the retailers kind of came together um, to try and, and help the COVID situation. Um, and how they did this was a lot of um, people were obviously, um, you know, because they didn't have um, jobs or they've lost some of their jobs, um, there were a lot of families like in need of, of like food and like blankets and stuff like that. And what was really amazing during COVID is a lot of the big retailers came together and they started collecting donations and doing drives and stuff and, and, and actually delivering and handing out grocery hampers to a lot of the, the, the communities in the, in the more like the smaller areas and not just the smaller areas to like some other places where people were in need of food because as lockdown levels um stayed locked down for months the situation started to get dire and people were going hungry so i think you know working that was the, the best part for me um or the, or the best part of my job during the, the the pandemic now however things are opening up you know people are going back to their jobs um and stuff so things are getting a little bit better but very slowly and okay. sorry, as a creative director, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so so uh, uh, you were mentioning to, to me just now, uh, you have to work from home. So I believe yes. the entire top management of the company that you work, or other company too, uh, they, they, they work from home uh, during the pandemic. Uh, the past almost two years of pandemic, what do you think about working from home? Is it is a good uh, method of working uh, to be continued? Or, or what, what do you think? Because Tony Fernandez, Air Asia owner, recently was uh, quoting that uh, during the pandemic, uh, working from home is teaching him to cut costs and more effective. So what do you think and your view about working from home? Okay, so I personally love working from home. Um, I think that for me, it feels like in my team at least, um, productivity has increased, in fact. Oh, okay. I think there's, a, there's, yeah, there's different levels to actually working at home. I think the first thing you need to be disciplined, you know, because I think before when you were going into the office, you know, there would be like moments in between meetings where you have a bit of a, a break. Now, currently, you can turn off a Microsoft Teams meeting and go straight into another meeting. So sometimes your entire day is just full of meetings. So that part isn't great. But what I do love is the fact that, um, you know, I spend less time in traffic um, um, and I actually can, if there is time, have lunch at home because normally my work day would be super busy, you know, be going from one meeting to another meeting, being in presentations. It was, it was relentless and nonstop. I'm not saying it's still the same way, but I feel like the fact that I'm doing it in the comfort of my own home at the moment, I prefer personally. I think everybody has a different take on it. I do miss because the nature of my job is collaboration. You know, the nature of my job is to to work with the people in my team as well. So we do miss the the, the time that we have that we can brainstorm concepts together, um, but we do find time to do it either on teams or now that the, the levels have decreased, um, or at least loosened up a little bit, we are finding times to meet and do st and, and in certain gatherings and actually brainstorm a bit more. But fundamentally, I think where we're going to be shifting is more into like a hybrid scenario where okay. maybe three days you work at home, two days, you know, you're going to the office. Um, oh, okay. So that might change. We're busy working out what that's like. Uh, 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 yeah. Is that the new direction of the company or? Oh. Yes, I think I think moving forward, a lot of retailers are well, not retailers, a lot of companies that are looking at the different um, methods that they can almost make a customized version for each okay. company. You know, okay. so okay. for example, within our company, some people might have to go in. You know, and those are people that are store staff. Okay. You know, it's you, you, if you're in a store, you have to obviously go in. Yeah, but and it's not just management; it's throughout the entire company. Whoever can work from home can will be able to work from home in the future. They, we are busy working together to find out what the best way is to do that. Okay. So, uh, uh, there is a question that uh, 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 we would like to know. How this retail in South Africa is handling the convict and beyond it? How they, they, 
they they managing it the retail so i think right at the beginning when covid first started in south africa it was obviously very difficult for fashion retailers specifically you know okay. because there were a lot of protocols that had to be put in place we had to think obviously of the safety of store staff you had to think of like for example fitting the rooms and changing the rooms you know um oh. it's not always the the most a uh, safest place to be during that time so for the first couple of months a lot of the clothing retailers were either closed or it was cordoned off so for example um if there was a retailer that had a food section and a fashion section they would just close off the fashion section so um and the same with the with the with shopping for food there were long queues outside all of the retailers we okay. there was strict amount of like social distancing between between everybody okay. and the amount of people that was allowed to go in store was limited um now like i said that has decreased as the levels have decreased and things are slowly picking up what has happened however really in south africa is that a lot of home businesses okay have actually sprung up which is really good you know okay. so for example um during covid there were a lot of people starting their own businesses from home or whether it was cooking meals and foods and delivering it to different people you okay. could order it on an app you yeah. could phone order and they would deliver it okay. and that has been really good for the local industry here okay. as well because okay. we have been forced retailers have all been forced to look at different channels of suppliers for example okay. you know okay. whereas over the past before um because ships weren't allowed to come in or planes weren't allowed to come in yeah. a lot of the um the products from like for example whether it is like anywhere else in the world what wasn't allowed to come in so there would be long delays on product coming in so they, we were almost forced to really look at the supply chain and see where else we can get stuff and that was great i think for local people okay um, so with the local people that that do business from home is that affecting the yes. real retail uh, outlet outside there i think it is i think it I, but I, what i do think is that there's potential opportunity for okay. collaborations between the local people working from home you know and okay. the retailers you okay. know you okay. see i know in the past there's a, been a lot of this thing about like collaboration you know yeah. and and retailers maybe um uh sponsoring or or helping you know the smaller home person either by representing the product in their stores you know giving them an outlet to sell it there um so i think that there is a lot of there's a lot of that happening around you know mm -hmm. so as opposed to seeing it as competition potentially okay. there's a way that it can be like an ecosystem okay. you know okay that's very good to hear uh you've been to langkawi uh In Malaysia, uh, we have come to the next level, where the government is opening the local tourism, so that the government is allowing the second dose citizen allowed to go out for travelling for holidays, but within the country. Uh, one of the island, which is Langkawi, is being chosen to be the platform to test uh, what is going to be the future of uh, tourism. to move forward tourism uh, after this uh, this second second phase so uh, we see for the past one week it looks good uh, and uh, there is some fine tuning need to be done in langkawi for the sop what happened in cape town is your government allowed people to come to cape town to, for holiday or can your citizen goes out uh to other places in africa to for holidays or, or what is the situation over there because this will so, be so this will be good for retail if the government is allowing uh tourism or opening the economy yeah so i mean south africa and cape town especially has always been a very like a, like a very busy tourist destination and i think that 
the tourism industry specifically has taken a very big hit during COVID. And I, I was not just here, I think worldwide. Um, you know, um, the hotels, the, the eating places, a lot of the, the, the those um, retail or um, um, tourist places, they've definitely taken a hit. And like I said before, during COVID, there was a lot of support even locally for some of the restaurants mm. that started doing home deliveries, you know, so mm. that really helped as well. Mm. Mm. But in terms, and so they changed their way or the operating system with the restaurants, kept the kitchen open. People weren't allowed to sit down, but you could still order food and they would deliver to your house. Okay, okay. which was great. Okay. Um, the thing about tourism right now, we are allowed under the level that we are currently at to go to, for example, I mean, being Cape Town, we can fly to Joburg, we can fly to Durban, we can drive, through, we can go anywhere in, in South Africa at the moment okay. and certain neighboring countries to go on holiday. Okay. So I know that some people have booked tickets to go to Zanzibar or have gone um, to like uh, Zimbabwe or different other places within Africa where they're allowed. Namibia, for example, some people have gone there as well. It all depends on that particular country. Sorry, I'm just putting my phone in silent. It all depends on that particular country that they are in. Okay. Um, so what is nice is that there's been a lot of discounted uh, rates. So a lot of the, the travel agencies or the actual hotels, they've got um, like like less 50 percent some even the 70 percent which is actually good, good for like local people here yeah, because sometimes the local people couldn't afford to go to a lot of those kind of five star four star places because it was so expensive because it okay. was more targeted to like you know international clients yes. so what has been great is that now like a lot of the local people could go and like to the game reserves or places that they wouldn't would nearly been able to go to okay uh, pandemic, retail is down, e-commerce take place. What is the situation in South Africa for e-commerce? Uh, I think it is moving really fast. There's a lot of, you know, we have like a lot of, um, you know, take a lot is probably one of the biggest um, places that we've got here that will deliver to every, everybody. And I think every single retailer have had to invest a lot of money just to, and quickly you know, to get their e-commerce platforms up to scratch. Mm. Um, because before COVID, there were a lot of like, um, and it was slowly increasing, there were a lot of online um, shops that you could buy stuff from and a lot of them popping up. But COVID has almost forced retailers to like move faster, you know? They okay. couldn't afford to like, um, okay. you know, slow down. Is more higher? Catch uh, yes, uh, do, definitely. The competition is more higher? Yes, yes, I think so. Um, online, especially, you know, you see the, um, I mean, you guys know, you know, it, like when people start, F, you, when you can't leave your house yeah. and you're forced <laughs> to stay in for a certain level lockdown, you know, yeah, and yeah. the only way you can get food or, or, or games or, or stuff like that, you could only order it online. And that's why retailers, they were forced to actually up their game and like, and so they could be part of the, you know, the, the online um, um, upswing. Yeah. What has actually also happened was home retail the retailers have actually done really well. So okay. people, because they're staying at home, you okay. know, they're now making their house better. You know, people have been, you know, installing like gyms at home or um, making their house or flat or little area feel more um, like almost like a staycation, you know, or like a yeah. home, like a holiday house, yeah, yeah. because yeah. if you're forced to stay at home, they want to be more comfortable, you know, yeah. so home where sales have actually really been like going up. Okay. Specifically. Uh, uh, Suat, uh, we have one uh, question that we want to know. Uh, it's very for, uh, important for us to, to understand and we want you to share with us on how South Africa consumer spending recovery plan uh, during this pandemic? Just clarify the question for me when you say spending uh, South recovery Africa consumer plan? spending uh, recovery plan. I think that probably a lot of consumers, not a lot of people can actually save. 
probably during this time. And I'm just talking from a financial point of view, you know, yeah. it probably has been very difficult over the past year for people to even save. I think a lot of people had had to dip, and this is just my opinion. I yeah. feel, think that a lot of people have had to dip into their savings, you know, yeah. that yeah. they maybe had to put aside. And now slowly, you know, they've had to start re looking their budgets and what they would normally be spending their money on. So, you know, and being more strict with their budget, whether it's entertainment and what kind of entertainment it is, you know, um, where they want to actually spend their money, you know, is it stuff that's a bit more frivolous or if it's things that they um, really need to actually, I would say survive is the first thing. And then secondly, it would be to actually um, make sure that they, they, it's them and their family. I think a lot of people are first prioritizing them and their family before they even think about doing a lot of other stuff first. And I think that for, for me, the recovery plan, um, it'd be very much way more strict. I think they're definitely going to be cutting down on a lot of what is deemed luxuries, you know? Okay. Um, I don't know if that answers your question or if you've yes, yes, got a different yes. way of phrasing at least, it, maybe? At least we understand the situation over there. It's like in Malaysia. Uh, we would like to share with you, the government take the effort uh, to, to negotiate with the banks. Eh? The central bank take negotiate uh, with all the commercial banks by giving monotorium, things like that, you know. And, and back to e-commerce question, like Malaysia, during the pandemic, the government decided to invest on digitalizing it, uh, di digitalize our country, uh, pushing very hard for retailers to go for online, digital. Uh, many grants be given out to retailers uh, to go into e-commerce uh, in Malaysia. The government uh, supported the grant. For example, if you have a, a retail shop, uh, the government is uh, pushing you to go into digitalize uh, and e-commerce your business. And the government gives you grant 5,000 ringgit uh, to, to help you how to market your, your product in digital marketing. Uh, is this happening, something like this happening in, in South Africa? Um, so not exactly like that. No, um, not that I can, not that I can actually recall. What, okay. what did happen at the beginning of COVID was that the government obviously um, had put aside an amount of money that they were going to use to help the people that could not go to work during the time of COVID, you know? Okay. So you now there's usually like a, like a government grant that certain people get every month. A lot of that budget was supposedly put aside to actually just um, increase that monthly amount that people were getting, you know? Because remember, a lot of South people working in South Africa, like a normal average person, they would need to travel. And a lot of people travel every day, which I'm sure is the same in Malaysia as well. They have to travel by public transport to go to their, their jobs, you know, whether it's working on building sites, whether it's working in stores, whether it's doing whatever. So a lot of, a lot of people could not actually go to their normal day-to-day -day jobs. So they were forced to just stay at home. And there was, the idea was that the, that the government would then take whatever money that they had put aside, which we, was received by many, like, Rita, like a lot of people actually donated money to that cause. It was called, I can't remember the name of the fund, but it was used to supposedly hand out money to some of the people that could not go and do that. So that's the one thing. The second thing that they did do was they also, like you guys did, spoke to the banks and stuff to look at um, um, certain bond repayments that people might have on their homes to see how they could renegotiate, um, you know, certain debt that people had and stuff like that. But specifically, um, putting money aside to help retailers with the e-commerce, to as far as I understand, that specifically did not happen, um, to my knowledge. Uh, we're still in the e-commerce question uh, uh, or e-commerce subject, uh, uh, Suad. Uh, we. We have a report from Rotters uh, in Joburg, uh, one of the uh, person uh, has gone into e-commerce, uh, online shopping business, and apparently uh, she's not happy with the response from the consumer. Uh, as a creative director, uh, what is your advice to those new retailers from home? Uh, how do they 
they need to to venture into e-commerce to make their their venture into e-commerce successful. Meaning, what they need to do when they venture into e-commerce. Because some people they say, so, "Oh, I go online, people will come and buy." <laughs> but people don't. But how, how so, do you, you understand? My, okay, my, so my, my opinion, I I do I do. So yeah. I think that so my answer to that would be that firstly. With anything that you do, especially in the detail, you need to promote it. You know, yeah. the whole point of like marketing is to market something and promote something. You know, there's a lot of people I think that have really amazing products, but they don't actually invest or put money behind promoting whatever the product is. Yeah. So even if you've got an amazing website or you have an amazing product, you can't just post it and expect people to come. You know, um, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that gets done not necessarily by me but obviously some of my colleagues who would work out the right way in which to to push the content if i can call it like that or yeah. or yeah. with its um search function so i would say search is a is a big thing so you know when you type in anything onto um uh, google or any kind of search whatever when you type in so for example you type in um i don't know fashion retailer okay. and you type in fashion retailer you'll yeah. see what comes up first yeah. those retailers that come up first they are paid it's you you pay to come up first you know what i mean okay. it's called okay. search okay so you have to promote it and whether you're paying google whether you're paying facebook or whatever it is so that you appear uh, on it um so there has to be in at least some form of investment in promoting your product that you have um and how do you promote that? You can do it in different ways, whether it's social posts, whether it is, um, you know, taking out different kinds of forms of advertising on digital um, banners, etc., stuff like that. But um, I would say you have to market some your product if you're going to, you know, put something out there. Unless, of course, you collaborate with a well-known person and they then promote it on their channels as well. But it's a very big ecosystem of different things that all need to be in, cha in, in place. I mean, you can call it an omni-channel, I suppose. But yeah, does that help answer that question? Uh, so, uh, when you talk about uh, e-commerce, search engine, we have to pay Google, this, that. Do you have a company that provide training uh, for those people or those retailers that wants to learn how to market their product in e-commerce uh, uh, platform? Well, that's a specific... So that's a whole specific other course, which I personally haven't done, you know, okay. like everyone, everyone has their different expertise. I can only speak from what my experience has been with working with my colleagues that have to promote the work that we do, you know. So yeah. a big part of the, my job is obviously not just uh, working with my team who will design whether it is um, advertising, whether it's a TV ad, whether it's um, digital content that needs to live yeah, online, whether yeah, it's yeah. banners, whether it's an emailer, whatever it is, we will design it and then we work with our digital and social media team yeah. and they will then advise and tell us, okay, this piece of content needs to be 30 seconds and it needs to live on an Insta story, you know, or this needs to be um, uh, live on YouTube or this needs to be a... So, they would have studied, you know, um, or gone on a course to help them, uh, you know, really give the best advice to us. Yeah. So within any marketing team, there's a whole lot of different people and everyone has their different expertise. You know, there isn't one person that's the full on expert on everything. So we, we have to work together to say, okay, fine, if I do this, then what is the best platform to use to market this? Yeah. And then they will tell advice to come back to me and say, well, you know what, this needs to be um, uh, like this is how long it needs to be. And we need to put our marketing budget behind mm. search as well as uh, social media and then display ads. And you know what, do we need to print something? Do we need to go on TV? Does it need mm. to go on radio? So there's a whole market a team, um, a, a media team that we have that will decide that and come back to us and advise us on it and we will work together to decide what the best marketing approach should be for whether it's a campaign or whether it's a specific product that we want to launch um yeah okay uh so I, yeah just to share with you uh during the pandemic uh from the first pandemic until today uh in malaysia uh the government uh, under the Ministry of Human Resource, have created uh, a big 
budget to give away uh, for people or for the citizen that have no job or been uh, been terminated or the company has closed and they got no job, uh, they can apply uh, any training classes in e-commerce. Uh, the training will be paid by the government and they can start do their business uh, by themselves from home or from wherever. But the training will be provided and the the payment or the the fees for the payment will be paid by the government for them. Uh, is that happening also in uh, South Africa? Do you have that kind of system? I wish it was. <laughs> I wish that was happening here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice if someone came and said, oh, yeah, you know, if, yes, you can go and learn this new skill. And yeah. then you can, you know, if you've got your own home business, yeah. you know, you can help yourself. I yeah. always think that if you, you teach a man to fish, you know, and then yeah. in the long run, it will yeah. be better for the actual economy. And I think... Yeah. That something like that, I think, is great. You know, if I mean, I'm sure that there are different other um, courses and stuff that the government does have, and different other stuff that they have in place. But I mean, I think that specifically that you spoke about, I think it would be great because, like I said before, there's a lot of people that have started their own small little business. They are they are little home entrepreneurs. They're working from home. You know, they might be just selling a sauce that they're making. They might be. Um, you know, weaving baskets or doing something else. You know, it's it's difficult if you make products and you don't have either a way to market it, you know, or have a source of like a supply chain where, you know, someone will sell it for you. So I think yeah. for people to learn how to market it, to sell their own stuff, I think it's a great skill to have. Not even for product, but just how to sell yourself, you know, yeah. to be able to go afterwards to like a job interview or something like that and have the skill set to actually sell yourself to to be able to get a job. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's great what, that they're doing that. This is what happening in Malaysia until today. Uh, those uh, people who has got no job, they can go to the Ministry of Human Resource. They got the list of classes and training, and you can uh, go into it, and the government pays for you. And after that, you can either work for people or you can work from home. But my next question is: uh, the New York Times report uh, two days ago, uh, many retailers has closed down. One of the retailers has closed down uh, 40 stores worldwide is the Starbucks coffee. Okay? Uh, I believe you have so many uh, cafes and, and type of uh, uh, Starbucks in, in Cape Town, uh, in, in, in South Africa. Is there any uh, shutdown due, due to the pandemic? So, I think there are some coffee shops that have closed down we don't have as many starbucks for example in south africa okay. that, like you would have in malaysia for example yeah i think i mean just in cape town alone i think there's like less than 10 starbucks you know it might even be in the whole of south africa i don't exactly know the amount of starbucks there is but what i can tell you is is that um there have been businesses that have slowed down in terms of the staff and some of them might have closed but not to the big degree for example where like one chain has closed down 40 not to okay. my knowledge like okay. i said before a lot of people a lot of we are supporting like the local restaurants so a lot of people where before we were so used to um at some point in lockdown you know when everybody was making baking banana bread and there were you know, cooking and buying ingredients and making all these things. Eventually, I think a lot of people started not cooking and saying we need to support the people, either the restaurants or support the coffee shops um, or support the people making the home food by ordering stuff via, you know, whether it's Uber Eats or um, uh, Mr. Delivery or stuff like that. So I think that in terms of supporting the restaurants, the people are making the effort to do that because remember our restrictions now allow us to go to a coffee shop we are allowed to sit there currently um, and even when we were on level three you could go in and still order something even though you couldn't sit down and eat it there so i don't think it's necessarily as dire as like closing for example all the mug and beans 
you know, in South Africa, because we have like a lot of mug and beans here or like a, a lot of the other smaller coffee shops that we've got. But they're surviving. Like they're hanging on there by their fingernails, I would say. For now, there hasn't been a mass shutdown of any of okay. those coffee shops yet. The, 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 uh, the retail on the FMB is still uh, sustainable and they are focusing on, I believe, uh, home deliveries. Um, FNB? Yes, like McDonald's, Kentucky, you mean like the Nando's, uh, things oh, like that. Oh. Yeah, like so. The the there's this new place, in fact, that opened up now. I actually just downloaded it onto my phone. It's called Vault as well, um, where they actually have every day. And I only discovered this like two days ago. Like sometimes every day they have like a different discount on some yeah. of the the food items that's on there. Yeah. You know, so if it's Kentucky, like maybe today it will be this fifty percent off if you order on Vault. Yeah. So a lot of people are running like these specials, but it might not be on like all the other. Stuff. So I've got on my phone, for example, I have Uber Eats, I have Mr. Delivery, I have Vault. You know, I, I, I move around with all the different apps to see what yeah. and when we order. And I think a lot of people are checking to see, oh, who's having a promotion today? You know, where's the special today? And then okay. some people are shopping, you know. Okay. You're almost not being um, sticking to one thing. You're moving around and all the different stuff to see yeah. where you get the best deal. That's yeah. what I'm doing at least. Uh, so Ad, we're going to take a short break and we'll come back to you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, we are back uh, after the short break. Uh, we will we, we'll stay with uh, Suat Holland. Uh, we'll come back to her now uh, with a few more questions about uh, the retail. And uh, she will be sharing with us about how to improve your, your retail uh, during the pandemic uh, in your country. Okay, Suat, are you there? I'm here. Okay. I didn't run away yet. <laughs> okay, just now we were talking about uh, FMB, uh, cafes, uh, cooking from home. Uh, now is very high demand in your country. What about fashion retail? Now the shopping mall has really opened. What about fashion retail, supermarket? Uh, is this coming back? To be honest, I feel like fashion, all fashion retailers at the moment, I think they've had to look and see what clothing they're actually offering. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people want clothing that's probably more comfortable. Um, you know, a lot of people are wanting to spend more time outside, you know, outdoors. People are going running, hiking, trying to be more active after being cooped up for so many months inside. So I think firstly, they've had to look and see what actual clothing that they are offering. Um, but I think that sales have been, I don't think sales have been that amazing. I think that they're going to be struggling and I don't and I think when the fourth wave hits 
will probably be struggling a little bit more. I think only the really smart ones will look at what they are selling and what they're offering and see if they can adjust to what the consumer actually wants. You know, I might be wrong. You know, there might be a whole thing where people are tired of being um, wearing tax suits and gowns for the past couple of months, you know, and decide, well, actually, they want to be more like adventurous. They want to be more, um, and they want to dress up. And you never know what might happen in December, you know. Um, mm. It's New Year's, there might be some more parties, even though it's much smaller ones, and people might want to just dress up a little bit more. But I think generally, um, fashion retailers have all been suffering. Yeah. Except, so, like I said, uh, if they have homely offerings as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So at Christmas are coming around the corner, and you know, uh, South African majority of them are celebrating Christmas. Okay? Uh, yes. Are you looking... Uh, at, I'm talking about retail. Uh, what do you think about the? Fa I'm talking about the fashion still, uh, fas fashion retail. What do you think about consumer uh, reaction on the fashion retail? Is it going to be the high-end brand or the middle, middle, uh, middle low brand uh, who's going to push up the sale? That's a bit, well. So I think that Christmas specifically, like I said before, I think that customers have actually told us that they're going to be focusing more on on like smaller family gatherings. Yeah. You know, there will be, um, so it's not necessarily going to be like the big Christmas parties we've, you know, we've had in years before. And when yeah. you have big Christmas parties, people will gently dress up, you know, and yeah. have a couple of different outfits to go to all the different parties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that customers more and more they want to focus more on the smaller household families okay. and um the things that they're going to be doing with maybe just the extended family like whether it's like a, a grandmother or something that's living with him and i think that um when it comes to sales i think it might be mostly in the comfort space still and more in the outdoor so i think retailers that are selling more outdoor clothing, you know, whether people are going to go camping or glamping or whatever oh, okay, it is. Okay. I think those retailers will probably um, experience better sales than, for example, ones that are doing more high fashion okay. um, outfits, you know, because okay. it's going to be more family gatherings as opposed okay. to like bigger other parties. Mm. Okay. So, uh, that would be my... uh, retailers, are they going e-commerce too in, in South Africa? We, we, we know yeah, food, FMB are going for uh, e-commerce online. No. Uh, is retailers uh, like fashion all goes, uh, goes to e-commerce too? Yes, definitely. I mean, we, for the, they've had to be. Like most of the fashion retailers, in fact, probably all of the big fashion retailers definitely have a, um, um, an e-commerce platform. Okay. I mean, they've had to have one to survive. Okay. So the online uh, during this pandemic, the online business are, 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 are helping the retailers to keep on going on uh, their business, right? Yes, and I think not only online but also social media. I think there's a lot of people using Instagram, for example, as a okay. place to shop. You know. Okay. So Instagram, I feel, has be, become quite a big platform for yeah. especially smaller home uh, home businesses and stuff to actually advertise their stuff because you know they might have had initially their friends and family on it but now more than ever i think there's been this rise in shopping of instagram especially like food stuff you know because we especially during covid you know people were all baking and cooking stuff and then posting their stuff on instagram and then you know some people started selling some, some of the things that they were making so i think in terms of e-commerce for me, e-commerce isn't just obviously like a website. It's definitely yeah. like the social platforms as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, we'll be talking about FMB. We're talking about e-commerce. We're talking about retail. We're talking about how to help the how uh, the view of people going into e-commerce, things like that. But, you know, this pandemic, uh, COVID-19, worldwide, is given us a very big impact. How... How bad, how big is the impact to retail in Cape Town or South Africa during this pandemic, COVID-19? I think that the long-term impact of it might actually be um, either better or worse in the long run. I think that over the past almost two years now, right, there obviously has been a huge impact specifically on the fashion retail. Right, yeah. food yeah. not so much. Food mm. retailers have done much better, mm. and like I said, home retailers have done much better. I think fashion will only need to see how sustainable 
they actually are probably within the next year to year and a half. Okay. Um, I don't think that the full effects have really, really been experienced yet. Um, to be honest, and I can't honestly say that that would be in my expertise to say that this is exactly where it will be. Um, I just think that for me, looking at the trend of certain sales, it has been mostly focused on fashion, food, sorry, on homeware, food, mm -hmm. and, and obviously when it is fashion, it's been more on like leisure wear and more comfortable like outside stuff, you know, whether it's yoga outfits or, or the accessories that go with creating a more um, experiential kind of um, thing, you know, not just party wear. Uh, so I, I have interesting uh, uh, question that I want you to share with us. Uh, you've been to Malaysia and you know Petronas, uh, one of the largest Yes, uh, Twin Towers. Petro oil and gas company. And you, you've been to see our petrol station of Petronas. It's like a supermarket, you know. Uh, and you have engine over there. And now Petronas, during the pandemic, they are collaborating with the household to send food to the station to, uh, for retail. Okay? Uh, do you think mm -hmm. it's a good idea for uh, retailers like you all uh, uh, sharing... Uh, the, the business whereby allowing all these small, small uh, homemade product, homemade uh, food product uh, to collaborate with uh, giant uh, retailers like you. I mean, uh, it, we have Eon Bake. Uh, if you go to Eon Bake, we have one corner, homemade uh, area, where they allow all those homemade product to, to display and to start selling in the, in the supermarket, you know. Uh, do you do you do you do that in, in in Cape Town or do you have any intention to collaborate with the homemade? Because some of the homemade or maybe majority of the homemade food are very good and fresh. So are retailers. So I can. Please. Firstly, I can answer. Okay. Yes, uh, so I think that there has definitely been. Like I said before, there's definitely been a very big trend specifically on the local, you know, yeah. and, and looking at local suppliers. And I think each brand, the, the way that they collaborate with a local person is slightly different. You know, each company might do it in a little bit different way. If you are a bigger retailer, obviously there are certain quality control and stuff like that, that obviously, um, you know, suppliers would need to tick off those certain boxes. Um, but there is definitely, I would say most of the retailers can they are looking for the opportunities to collaborate with, you know, um, local people, whether it is not even in just product, but helping them to actually make the product, whether it's designing certain packaging that some of the, the product might go into, you know, whether it is, um, you know, if it's a beauty product, for example, um, using um, local people to source some of the ingredients that go into the product. And I think when you look at a lot of the retailers, I mean, in the past, they have done like local collabs and stuff, but now more and more, it's become more imperative because the supply chain has generally been um, almost cut off in certain areas. So yes, I do think that we need to watch the space. I think it's going to be a very big, I think it should be um, something that we all push for. And I mean, I know that me myself, you know, in the in the job that I currently have, where possible, we always try to collaborate with local suppliers. When I say locals, not just South Africa, but even within the communities that we are in, you know, like more and more, for example, if um, you are within a smaller section of Cape Town, I yeah. think there's an opportunity for retailers to collaborate with the local or the local uh, people in that specific area. You know yeah. what I mean? It doesn't need to just be like, and then each retailer can be slightly different in the area that they are at. So that doesn't that person doesn't need to incur costs necessarily of transporting stuff over um, prov borders in provinces and stuff like that. Yeah. I think there's an opportunity to collaborate very much locally yeah. with the local supermarket. You know. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, if you uh, if you make a little bit research on uh, a, a brand called Mark and Spencer uh, in London, uh, they have. They have focusing their change of type of uh, focusing type of retail business from fashion into more more into supermarket, FMB food, okay, and in okay. Malaysia and Asian region, they are moving towards that, so they are going to cut their uh, expansion of uh, fashion, and uh, they're going to expand more on their supermarket, which is food, okay. 
uh, they believe that uh, food business, food retail business will bring them big, big, big returns. What do you think about that in South Africa? Well, will big retailers like like whoever that 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 has in in South Africa will will they move towards that direction? Meaning, uh, they have one big shopping mall with supermarket, but they have chain of mini 24 hours supermarket outside the mall, which is at all the neighboring areas, like 7-Eleven. Okay, so good. Okay, so currently already in South Africa, some of the food retailers specifically, they are in certain like um, petrol stations, if you can call it that, you know, yeah. which is open 24 hours. Okay. So a lot of the big food retailers, they've maybe collaborated with different um, uh, petrol stations to set up a small little, like little mini version of their store where they sell some of the basic essentials that people might yeah. need, you know, over like 24 hours. So that has been around for, for years here yeah, in yeah. South Africa. We've been doing it for a long time, you know. But yeah. I think that it might, more and more, there might be smaller um, um, spaces opening up as opposed to like, bigger malls where there's a lot of people congregating, you know, in a, in, a, in a space. I think that initially when COVID hit, a lot of people were scared to go to like the bigger malls as well. Yeah. You know, the malls were empty. Um, people tried to go to the closest shop or the closest place that was to their homes because we couldn't drive, um, you know, to like, um, far places as well because there'd be roadblocks, etc. So I think there's still a lot of people that actually don't go to malls. Um, even though your country in Cape Town in South Africa, they are all open. Um, so I think that definitely like the smaller little spots would probably still work well moving to the future because there's still this kind of fear of some malls that people might have. Um, okay. Yeah. This is the question that a lot of citizens, I believe, in South Africa, they also want to know from you. Uh, in Malaysia, also people want to know. Why, during the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic, the food prices goes up? Why? From the retail. Think, so, so, look, I can honestly say that I think that the reason food prices probably went up was because the supply chain was, was cut. You know what I mean? Why does a price of anything go up? What you know, do you mean by supply been, chain was cut? What do you mean by that? No, I mean that it's difficult to, for example, get the food to the store. So okay. remember, like you have a shop, you know, and if you can't get the bread to the actual shop, you know, okay. Okay. it might take days or you have to pay extra to let it get there, whatever it is. I think that's why um, a lot of the prices went up on certain stuff is because it just wasn't available. You know, it was difficult yeah. to actually get it. Remember, yeah. borders were closed, couldn't get certain things in. Um, so, I th and also to a large extent, you know, I think a lot of the retailers here in South Africa, they actually cut some of their prices, you know, or they offered like, um, like discounts or stuff on certain items that were essentials so that people could actually afford it. Um, you know, like I said before, um, I think, you, there's certain things that are obviously regulated, like the, the, the price of certain bread or whatever. But I, I don't think that... The only thing I remember, there was a story around ginger, the price of ginger, for example, becoming really expensive, you know, because all yeah. of a sudden, everyone wanted to put ginger in their tea. So there was this one incident, but I think that was kind of all like sorted out again. But generally, I think the reason prices go up is because obviously those retailers have to survive as well so they need to be able to source the best um or get the product at the best prices so that they can offer us the best prices as well um so yeah i think uh, it's because the actual cost of it went down okay that's six minutes uh so I, as a creative director do you think south africa need a food bank to help uh the people of south africa during the pandemic covid 19 so we do have food banks. We even have something called a clothing bank. Okay. You know, like they are. So when I say a food bank, um, what I, when I mentioned earlier, when COVID started, there was a lot of um, retailers that yes. all came together and they did this thing where they would collect food, 
you know, mm -hmm. that would then be distributed to the, the people in the communities where it actually needed. So, for example, you'd go shopping into a retailer and they'd, they'd have a, a trolley there or a, a, a basket or something. And if you went and you bought something, you could put it into that basket. Okay. Um, and then they would collect it at the end of the day and then they would distribute it uh, via, like, whether it's gift of the givers or different other um, um, organizations, would they, they would then collaborate with them to distribute the product and the food to the different communities. And like I said before, for me, that was the, the most, the best part of my job, I would say, last year was being involved in some of those projects, you know, or marketing some of those initiatives where people could collect food for the needy and, and for, the help, for, the, for the people that actually needed um, the sustenance during that time. And it's still ongoing. It hasn't stopped. You know, there's this whole big initiative to alleviate hunger because the most important problem, I think, worldwide or in any country at the moment are the people that are going hungry. And they're going hungry because they've either lost their jobs during COVID or the hours have been cut or something like that. And it's not just retailers. I think there's a lot of good people, a lot of communities that have actually come together and they're helping, they're helping their fellow human beings, you know, which yeah. I think should continue. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, our last question to you, we'd like you to share your view and your opinion as a creative director and you have long uh, experience in marketing and in uh, retail. Uh, many uh, people in South Africa or in the world uh, are jobless due to the pandemic. Uh, what is your view uh, for them to move on their life if they got no job? Are they are your view or your, your advice for them to start to do something from home base or still hunting for job, which they don't know whether, we don't know when they can get the job. So what is your advice to this kind of citizen that happening in your country, my country and other countries? You know, that's a very difficult question because I think that's probably one of the most difficult questions that you can ask another person because it's like when you when they say, how do I solve world peace? You know, like <laughs> there isn't one right answer and everyone, like, you know, everyone will have a different viewpoint on that. But what I will say, and I mean, I can sit here and say that, oh, you should do this, but each individual person is different. You know, everybody's circumstances are different. Um, what I can say is that I feel that if you can find something to do that um, to either is something that you're good at and try and, and you know and, and use that as a as a as a as a, as a platform to, to spring off if you can do something like i said a lot of people doing something from home whether it's baking whether it's 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 sewing something and selling it whatever it is i think that it's you know it's you need to try and do something i suppose and this answer sounds quite in like it feels like I don't really have the answer for that, but I feel that if people tap into what they're good at, that's always something to do. But I mean, I can sit here in my nice house and like preach and say, this is what people should do. I've never really been in the circumstance like that. So yeah, I mean, besides making a lot of dua as well, um, I think that if the government and, and, and communities can help and always, you know, there's always a thing like charity begins at home as well, you know, like, for me, it's like, do what you can for another human being. Like, if you can give, give. But also, you know, try and teach a man to fish, like I said earlier. If you can help people with the skill set, if you can, then do that. And this is what you can probably do for another human, human being. But if you want that person, I think you just need the, I suppose, the help. You need someone to keep on giving you hope that you can do something. Because, I mean, a lot of people have been depressed over this time. And I just feel like it's very difficult um, um, question to actually answer but yeah i hope so I, 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 before we end the show yeah? uh the last question that we want to we want uh, to uh, we want you to share with us is what is your 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 advice uh towards the retailers of the way they have to move on uh from this uh phase two of their business i think that it's probably just put your head down and just keep on doing what you're doing, uh, but also look and see like what the customer actually wants. I think we need to listen to the customers, okay. you know, and, and, and actually 
listen to what they need, what they want, as opposed to us just saying, oh, we think that, they, they, that this is what they need. I think things are changing constantly and customer research, I think, is very, very important. You know, so that retailers actually, when they deliver stuff or when they invest their money in different whatever sectors, it's because they're answering a need that the customer has. I mean, for me, that is really like the core thing around selling. And, you know, if you, if you have something to sell, you need to understand that there's a demand for it as well. So for me, I would say the biggest advice I would say is just listen to your customer. Really listen to them and then, and then answer their questions, you know. And yeah. Yeah, that would be my advice. Okay, to all the retailers, listen to your customers. That is the advice coming from the expert of creative brand specialists. Thank you very much, Noan. Assalamualaikum. We, we, we shall meet you again very soon. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Salam. Salam.